Hello, my name is Ralph Malpe, and on this short videotape, I want to show you how to become a better putter. Right now and first, we're sitting in the Golf Club Design Studio. It's a state-of-the-art facility, and I'm surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of golf club heads, assembled golf clubs, prototypes, very interesting place to visit. In the Golf Club Design Studio, we have state-of-the-art CAD CAM systems, advanced 3D modeling systems, aerospace moment of inertia machines, high-speed photography using four cameras, sophisticated golf shaft measuring devices, four different robotic putting machines, and a full machine shop complete with CNC capabilities to build prototypes in woods, irons, and also putters. So this is again a very interesting place. There's virtually everything in here, but the research and development is the heart of the dynamic putter fitting system. All the research that went into it was done to benefit you, the consumer, in trying to improve your putting. Whether you're going to get your putter tuned up and changed and to fit you better, or whether you're going out to buy a new putter because of some new putter head design that's more advanced, is going to be your decision. And that's what you do when you go out and shop it. So what I want to talk to you about right now, and we start off, and I want to say, there are basically five variables in fitting that we need to be concerned with. And the five variables are fitting proper length, proper loft of the putter, proper lie of the putter, the proper head weight, which we do through a swing weight scale to determine the head weight, then also the proper putter head design that you have on the head for your given ability. I always like to play with the most game improvement clubs I can, but there are better golfers that like to play with different types of golf clubs where they claim they get more feel and this and that. But we'll talk today about the different playabilities on different types of putter heads depending on how they're designed, and that's also part of the fitting process. So here's one thing that's kind of important to discuss, and it's sort of difficult to discuss. And that is, when you're talking about putting, there's a skill level and there's a certain art to putting. And art and the skill level go hand in hand. We see the players on television, the tournament pros, and they have a feel and they've developed a fine art that we'll probably never achieve. And through this art, it's developed by all the practice and all the skill levels. So where art, skill, and skills art, I kind of put those together. So we can all go out and practice with whatever putter we have, no matter how it fits us, and we can get better and better and better to a certain point. But even like all the touring professionals that come in through this studio to go over their putting or look at their woods or change specifications on woods and irons, whatever we're doing, when we look at a golfer's equipment, your equipment, a touring professional's equipment, my equipment, what I want to do is take out of my equipment every bad variable there is. So yes, there's a skill level and an art level to how I putt or how I play, same with you, but if we get all those variables out, then we bring in the science and technology, if you will, of golf and of putting, and we use that science and technology to our advantage. So we have a skill level, we have a certain art in putting that we've developed, and there are things that we control in the putting stroke. And that's simply the art and the skill of it. We control the path and the face angle of the putter face. We control where we strike the ball, how close to the putter's center of gravity. We also control how hard we hit the putt. Those are skill levels. But if we take science and technology and the five fitting variables I just mentioned of length, loft, lie, weight of the head, and the head design itself, and we can make those the best we can for you, then you will surely putt better. First thing we're going to do is fit length. Length is very important in getting the golfer into the proper posture position. Being in the proper posture position puts your eyes over the ball and gets everything in perfect alignment. We're going to show you how we do that in a minute with some other aids that are on the fitting center. So the first thing in fitting proper length is to take the adjustable putter and we're going to have Jack take this putter and set down. We've set it at 35 inches. Most people are going to fit into much shorter putters than 35 inches. So he's sitting it. we got it at 35 inches right now, and as it sits, we've got the toe quite a bit up in the air, but worse than that, Jack's eyes are back behind the putter. We want his eyes over the putter. So what we're going to do next is push this down to 34 inches, and let's take a look. Better, you'll notice the putter moved in. His eyes are closer to the center of the putter, but still not enough. 
So let's get down to 33 inches. And the new min standard is basically 34 inches, where it used to be 35 because golfers are going with shorter putters and heavier head weights. So as we move in now, we see that Jack's eyes are closer to over the center, and we see that his posture is much better, his arms are hanging down, and in the stroke part of it right here, he would be more of a pendulum stroke right around his shoulders with no wrist break. So we're close on lie right there. We're very close. There's 32. And on 32, he's hanging a little bit over the end of the grip. So that's a little bit too short. So we go back to 32 and a half. And 32 and a half looks like a very good area to fit length with. Now we're going to do another little check while Jack's standing here. We're going to take our fitting board right here, and we're going to actually place a ball on it. And Jack's going to move up. And what this is is a mirror. And when you stand over the mirror and you look down, we can see the shoulder alignment, whether the shoulders are open, whether the shoulders are square, or whether the shoulders are closed. Remember, what we're doing right here is getting the player into the proper posture position so that he can strike a solid putt each time. So right now, in the mirror, there's a line. And it can tell if Jack's eyes are over the ball, or forward of the ball, or inside the ball. The proper area is on the line to about three quarters of an inch inside the ball. And right now, Jack, where are your eyes as you're looking down? Because they look about directly over it. Just inside the ball. Okay, so he's just inside the ball, just about right over the ball, very close. His shoulders are showing dead square alignment. So he's in the proper position. Arms are in the right position. Everything's going to be a nice pendulum right here in this uh, shape, the triangle shape. So that's starting off to fit length. So we found the proper length. The next thing we want to do is now that we have this length, we have an impact decal that we've put on the face. And what Jack's going to do right now is we're going to putt over to this direction right here. And he's going to hit some putts for us. And we're going to find out on the impact decal where he's impacting the ball. We want to impact it more toward the center of the putter or where the center of gravity is. And he'll take a couple strokes, and there's one right there, okay? Now what happens is, he's just made a putt with an impact decal. Impact decals are these little things right here, and when you impact with an impact decal, it leaves a mark of some dimples from the ball on it. So what we can do is we can take a pen, and Jack just struck the first putt, and we can go ahead at the pen and we'll put a black mark inside where he just struck the putt with the impact decal. And now what we want to do is have him do two more putts. And these are 25 foot putts that he's hitting right now. And we have a hole down there that he's aiming at. So he goes ahead, another putt. And we check on the impact decal. And we've got a very similar mark right there. And we'll do one more. And what we're trying to find out right now is the golfer's tendency or skill level to hit the ball near the middle of the face. And this tells us later on when we get to step five, because we're on step one right now fitting proper length, but this tells us later on on step five what putter head design is going to be best for him. And if he moves the ball all over the face a little bit or in a wider range, then we want to get a more higher playability putter head. And actually that higher playability putter head, meaning it's heel and toe weighted, meaning it has this high memo moment of inertia, it also means to you, the average person, that it has this wider sweet spot. So with a wider sweet spot, then Jack can move the ball all over the face, still get good distance and directional control. So when we talk about length and lie and loft, we're talking about direction control and distance control. And there are all various factors in those things. So now when I look at the impact decal, we see very similar. So he's staying within about a 3 8 inch to half inch circle, somewhere right in that area. So that shows very good, and that means that he can putt with a lower sweet spot club, a smaller sweet spot, which would be a club that would be a center shafted blade, uh, end shafted flanged blades, clubs without heel and toe weighting. But in this case, we're probably going to pick heel and toe weighting because that's the majority of all golfers today putt with heel and toe weighted putters because they want that added correction factor, if you will, from having these bigger sweet spots in case you do miss it. Remember as a golfer, what will happen is the higher your handicap and the longer the putt, generally the greater the range you're going to strike the ball on the putter face. And that means you need to go up to a higher 
moment of inertia, bigger sweet spot type putter. So we go back to this putter right here and we've determined now to get Jack into the proper, proper posture at address is we're at 32 and a half inches, fits him just right. There'll be a head weight that's going to be required at that and we're going to discuss that in a few minutes. So now we've fitted number one proper length and we've used the mirror to make sure that his shoulders are aligned because we're going to help him a little bit in his golfing game also and we've used the mirror to make sure that the eyes are directly over the ball or to within three quarters of an inch inside it. Now that we've determined the proper length of the putter and put the person into the proper putter position, the next two things are lie and loft. And the easiest thing in this system to fit on lie and, our lie and loft simply from the standpoint that we have a loft board and we have a lie fitting board right here. And what I'm going to do is have Jack get into a dress position. I've once again put the mirror down just to make sure that we repeat the address position in the proper posture that we were talking about earlier. The proper loft fitting board are vertical lines. Therefore, if when he's set up and he's getting set up, and generally from the set up position, a person strikes the ball from that same position, unless they're a person that pushes the hands ahead to uh, de-loft the putter or to do their hands ahead deal as a part of the putting routine to get into a relaxed mode. Some putters are behind that. So what we want to do is get the shaft lined up with the white lines that tells us that when he's at impact, he's at impact with the loft that's on the putter and he's not de-lofting it himself or increasing the loft himself. The lie fitting board has lines at an angle of 70 degrees. So we know whenever we're in front of the board and we can walk around and get in front of the board and look in and see how the shaft is to the lie board and then we can set the proper lie for this golfer at this given length. And I can stand right in front here and look at this putter fitting board to see if Jack is de-lofting the putter or increasing the loft of the putter. What I'm trying to do is achieve a four degree lofted impact. And I know what the loft is on the putters that I have here in the shop. So if Jack's de-lofting the putter and I still want four degrees of impact, I'm going to increase the loft. And I have a bending machine up here that'll allow me to do that. So Jack, let's get in ready to hit a ball. We're going to look down in the mirror. He's got his eyes almost directly over the ball, slightly inside. Shoulders are square. He's addressing the ball. Jack's not a person that forward presses, so he's going to strike the ball from the position that we see him in now. So I look at the lines and he's, he's dead vertical on that. And I look over at the lie board and I see what his lie angle is and I make a note of that. And now he strikes the ball. And he can strike the ball right off of the mirror. So we've now determined where the loft is. He's going to need a four degree loft on the putter because he's not going to de-loft it or increase the loft. And we know that his lie angle is 71 degrees. The lie angle on that board is 70 on the lines, but he holds it one degree upright to that, so his lie angle will be 71 degrees. Regardless of what putter we get him, at 32 and a half inches, he's going to have a 71 degree lie. And lie is very important because if the lie is off and the toe is in the air, the ball will be pulled to the left. If the lie is off and the heel is into the air, the ball will be pushed to the right. So we always want the proper lie angle for the golfer. And in this case, Jack 71, one more degree upright than our board. And most putters today are either standard at 70, 71, or 72. Many golfers end up with lies that are 67, 68, 69, some 74s, and some 75s. And because of this directional control problem, it's very important to get fit to the proper lie. Regarding loft, loft is one of the key elements in consistent distance control because when you strike a putt, there's going to be an initial skid to the putt and then it's going to go into roll. Basically a putt will skid between 14 and 20 percent and it'll go into pure roll between 86 and 80 percent. So the proper loft at four degrees will take the ball out of its depression as it sits on the green. It will raise it slightly. The ball will skid for a certain percentage. Then it will keep continue to tumble over until finally with friction in the grass, it goes into pure roll. What you're trying to accomplish by getting fit on this system is that you're trying to get consistent skid and roll every time. And so if we give you the proper loft at impact and you're not using zero loft or six degrees loft at impact, then you're going to get this consistent skid and then pure roll and therefore you're going to end up with better distance control than you've ever had before. 
So now we've gone through three things. We've done the length in the proper posture. We've gone through lie for directional control. We fit loft so we can make sure we get good distance control and very consistent skid and roll every time. And now we'll move down into talking about head weight and swing weight. The proper head weight on a putter, which is determined by using a swing weight scale, is extremely important in distance control. So we've already learned that loft is very important in distance control. Well, now we know that the head weight is also very important in distance control. And remember, we can't say it too often, but what we're trying to accomplish in putter fitting is to go ahead and give you all these correct specifications that make you as consistent as you can be in directional control and distance control. There are things that you have to work on yourself, which are things like how hard you impact the ball, the path and the, the face angle of a golf club. I mean, you've got a certain path that's coming in to impact, you've got a certain face angle, and we know if the face is closed, you'll pull the ball left. Those are putter skill levels. That's the art of putting, if you will. But we're taking all these variables right here that can truly help you using science and technology to further advance your putting and make you much more consistent. So Jack's picked out a 32 and a half inch putter. And we can either cut one down that's in the place uh, or we can order a special one or we can build one up. It just depends on the situation or the circumstance on where you're, do you're going with this. But on this particular putter is the one he selected. He loves this head design. It falls, he's a good player. It falls into the small impact area that he's hitting. It's a rather high moment of inertia putter, meaning it has a wider sweet spot. On this putter at 32 and a half, we need a much heavier head. And the way, way we know we need a heavier head, and we have heavier heads and heavier putters in here, is that when we put it in the swing weight scale down here and we check it, we find out that the swing weight on this is light. And what we're searching for is trying to get between C4 and D6 through any given length putter. And if we do that, getting between C4 and D6, we end up with an adequate head weight on the end of the putter that allows the golfer to go out and get good distance control. Too light a putter and you can't hit the good distance control. Some are long, some are short. You lose all that feel. So you're losing the science and technology, so to speak, of what proper head weight can do. Get the proper head weight where the swing weight is telling us what the head weight is on the putter and get that up between C4 and D6 and you now have a head weight that gives you much more consistent distance control. So I want to make sure that Jack leaves here with all the features that allow him to be as consistent as he can be. The other thing on this is we've determined the specification. We've, we've got the proper head weight on now. We know Jack's at 32 and a half inches long. We have the swing weight between C4 and D6 because of the head weight. We have the proper loft angle on it because it's a four degree lofted putter, which is what we want at impact, and Jack holds the putter vertical at impact. So now we go into the lie angle, and we knew that he was 71 degrees lie. So we use this part of the fitting machine to slip the putter in, get it all set up right here, and we put the putter in the machine, and what we want to do is measure it. So we slide our measuring gauge in right here, we want to check the lie angle and the loft angle. Well, the loft angle is four degrees, and that's read right behind here. And you can see this being done to your putter as you're being fit. Well, we read this right now, and when we read the lie angle, it says this putter was built to a 70-degree lie angle. And Jack is a 71-degree lie. So we're going to take our bending bar right here, and we will slide this out of the way. It's nothing more than putting the bending bar on the hosel. And we need to go one degree upright. So we just take it now and we bend it one degree upright. And then we go back and take the bending unit, the bender off of there. We put this back on it and we check our lie angle and our lie angle now is 71 degrees. So these are all the elements that help you putt better. And just to re reiterate one more time, there's a certain art and skill level to putting. There's a feel and we watch it when we see tour players every week. But when you go in to take technology and science to its maximum benefit for your game and you go through the five variables of understanding the putter head design, the proper swing weight, the loft, the lie, and then being fit into proper length, you will putt better. You will putt better consistently and you'll see the number of putts per round go down. Just imagine out on tour if a tour player could just eliminate one stroke per round or two strokes per round in the number of putts. It would be huge.